camera is rolling and now audio in four three two one roll audio good evening I'm going to address this camera I uh, posted something through Facebook yesterday which I figure I might as well unpack it a little tiny bit and rather than uh, doing it with graphics or whiteboards or you know chalk you know, chalk in a in the wall or something, um, I might as well just come out and say what it is that I think uh, about this particular issue. And that issue is uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau uh, being called a scumbag, and I think rightfully so. I mean, people have that uh, opinion of the way he's been behaving as of late, uh, especially considering the way he was speaking before he was elected. Yeah, yeah. Um, thing is that the thing I posted to Facebook was, I don't think we can be blamed. I don't think it's our fault that he is a scumbag. No, no, no. No, I think that the problem is actually a little more subtle and nuanced than that. Like, it is partly our fault in the sense that the Canadian population as a whole elected him. True. But we all didn't pick him specifically to do that to do that particular job, nor to do the, or represent his party in the way that he represented, or to represent his constituency in the way that he does, or, or anything. No. The funny thing is, I remember before the election, being particularly aware of the fact that Justin Trudeau was a contender, and that he polled really well, and that even if he hadn't announced that he was interested in running, if he had announced he was interested in running, the chances are, I thought, he had a a pretty darn good chance of, of winning if he ran for like the leadership of the Liberal, Liberal Party and then um, went on for the election. And sure enough, afterward, the what I thought could possibly happen came to pass because he's a populist candidate. This is this is my entire point here. We are to blame, but we're, it's not our fault. He was a populist candidate that polled really well, even if people didn't vote for him. And I did not vote for him, nor his party, in this uh, last Canadian election. But here he is now, flip-flopping in his language and uh, assuming a, a stern, authoritarian tone, as if he uh, enjoys wielding his <coughs> dictatorial power. <coughs> dick. <coughs> but see, people don't yell dick in a, in a child care. This is the other funny thing about the scumbag that he is. I mean, he decides when he knows he's getting criticized in the media or by, if not in the media, by people in the general public. He's going to get criticized. To avoid criticism, what does he do? He runs to daycare centers. <laughs> Lovely. Thanks, guy. Thanks Thanks a hell of a lot. <laughs> yeah, hiding, hiding, Mr. Trudeau. You are a bit of a scumbag, aren't you? Anyhow... Good evening. So I was, I thought I had the video finished as to what I was going to say about Justin Trudeau. Here it is on 11 Fours Day. And I've got a news story here in my, uh, in my phone. Let's just back it up. I should have pulled this up before. This is the first time I've ever had a chance to do this and make like have it work right. So, 11 fours day today, and Global News five hours ago started reporting. Five hours ago, that's that is not a coincidence. I tell you why it's not a coincidence. This isn't a coincidence because five hours ago is when uh, what 12 noon on 11 fours day. So that's the first point. Second point. This is the Global News story. Justin Trudeau would win another federal election tomorrow, says an Ipsos poll. It's being reported by Rahul uh, Kalvapale, Kalvapale, I guess, journalist of Global News, uh, lots of comments, lots of Facebook hits. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's approval rating has dropped somewhat over the past year and a half, <clears throat> but it remains the envy of most world leaders, according to the new Ipsos poll conducted on behalf of Global News. Poll found that over half of Canadians, 56%, continue to approve of the Liberal government, down from 61% since last new or since the new year. So that's five 
percentage points in this poll in uh, what three months? Disapproval of Trudeau's performance climbed five points up to 44%. That would be the reciprocal number for 56%. 39% of the decided voters would cast a ballot for the Liberals if an election were held tomorrow, while the Conservatives would win 32% of the vote and the NDP 20%, virtually identical to the results of the 2015 federal election the survey found. Daryl Bricker, CEO of Ipsos Public Affairs, attributed a five-point drop in Trudeau's approval to the fact that, the, that over time, any political leader tends to wear on people a little bit, and he's had his bumps and bruises. Uh, bumps and bruises in question range from an increase in the federal deficit to Trudeau's failure to deliver on his campaign cry for our electoral reform, not to mention, quote, personal comportment issues, on, end quote, such as his Christmas vacation on Naga Khan's private island and controversy surrounding cash for access fundraisers. I'm going to stop reading this, the news story there. Not, the link for this global news story will be in the description box below. Uh, I think the other thing that really matters here, the stuff that I had loaded on my phone first, which helped me up a little bit, I decided to do a little bit of digging as to what Ipsos was. And, of course, Wikipedia is the second place I checked. Uh, I actually went straight to their own, the Ipsos website first, but here we go. From Wikipedia, Ipsos Reid was the name of the re is was the name of a research company based in Canada, and it still exists under the name Ipsos as the Canadian arm of the global Ipsos Group. Founded in Winnipeg in 1979 as the Angus Reid Group, the company expanded from uh, expanded across the country, and was purchased by the Ipsos Group and given the name Ipsos Reid in 2000. Or today, Ipsos, formerly Ipsos Reid, is Canada's largest market research and public opinion polling firm. Companies' researchers conduct both syndicated and customized research studies across key sectors of the Canadian economy, including consumer, packaged goods, financial services, automotive, retail, health and technology, and tel telecommunications, and also, I guess, public opinion polling as regards political policies. Operations in seven Canadian city cities, Ipsos employs more than 600 research professionals and support staff across Canada. Biggest network of telephone call centers in the country as well as the largest pre-recruited household and online panels. Yeah, pre-recruited household and online panels. Pre-recruited household and online panels. So they know exactly who they're fucking polling over time. They're always asking the same people the same questions over time. Aha! Aha! Maybe that accounts for the reason why the approval rating hasn't really gone down a hell of a lot. Maybe that has something to do with it, huh? I, I went to ipsos.ca as well. The last thing that they re released free to the public was a Constitution Day report on Thursday, March 30th of 2017, so that's three days ago. That would have been Tuesday? Yeah. Uh, Constitution Day report is based on 1,003 reviews or interviews of Canadian adults examining Canadian attitudes and knowledge of the Canadian Constitution. Full report is free of charge and may be downloaded. So on and so forth. On Wednesday, March 29th, uh, from Toronto, Ontario office, uh, with stories of migrants from the U.S. walking illegally across the border in Manitoba and Quebec making headlines in recent weeks. Public opinion on the issue appears to be at odds with the rules governing. Canada's divided, um, Canadians divided on Trudeau's government's handling of illegal border crossings. I'm just having a look at this one in particular. But only one in ten, this is according to Ipsos, only one can eight percent Canadians align with current rules governing treatment of migrants illegally entering Canada from the U.S. Toronto, Ontario, with stories of migrants, uh, public opinion on the issue appears to be at odds with the rules governing the treatment of these migrants. Latest Ipsos poll for Global News shows that not only are Canadians divided on how migrants sh should be treated on entering the country, but very few agree with Canada's current approach on dealing with them, or to dealing with them that migrants who cross illegally are permitted to seek refuge status once detained by authorities, but those who cross at a legal port of entry are ineligible to apply for refugee status. 
survey finds that a slim majority of Canadians, 52%, think that all migrants crossing into Canada from the U.S. should be treated equally regardless of whether they entered Canada legally or illegally. Among those who think all migrants should be treated equally, most, most 76%, think all should be eligible to apply for refugee status and stay in Canada if successful in the application. The remainder, 24%, feel the opposite, that all migrants should be ineligible to apply for refugee status and return to the United States. The other half of Canadians, the 48%, believe that migrants crossing into Canada from the U.S. should be treated differently depending on whether their entry into Canada was legal or illegal. A, sudden, a significant majority of this group, 83%, support the opposite of the current rules in that migrants arriving illegally from should be sent back to the U.S. while those arriving legally should be permit, permitted to apply for refugee status. This leaves the uh, remaining 17% who favor the current rules, which states that migrants arriving in Canada legally cannot apply for refugee status and must be sent back to the U.S. while those arriving illegally are permitted to seek refugee status. Those which arrive in Canada legally cannot apply for refugee status is the current rule. While the, the illegals can because that's part of why they're looking for refugee. The assumption is that they're on the run. They had uh, four choices in the poll. I'm not going to get any more. I'll leave links to both these articles. The one that I... Uh, I read from Global News and to Ipsos and to this study in particular on immigration. But hey, interesting stuff, Mr. Trudeau. We're having such a great discussion nationally on this issue now. But uh, yeah, why are we to blame? Why are we pre-recruited? Pre-recruited. Why are we to blame? 